Welcome to our fourth annual Injury Prevention Symposium, our first virtual symposium. We all know we've been uh, going through some very difficult time, but the reality is that we'll come out of it much stronger. I want to thank all of you for attending, and especially our faculty. We have an amazing lineup, and I'm looking forward to this great symposium. It's an honor to introduce you our keynote speaker, Professor Raul Barr. Dr. Barr is a professor of sports medicine in the Department of Sports Medicine at the Norwegian <coughs> School of Sports Science and also the chair of the Oslo Sports Trauma Research Center. He's also the chief medical officer and chair of the medical department at the National Olympic Training Center, Olympatopen. Professor Barr is also the director of Aspatar Sports Injury and Illness Prevention Program at Aspatar Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Hospital in Doha, Qatar. It's an honor to have him with us. We're looking forward to your lecture, Dr. Barr. Thank you. Good morning, and uh, thank you very much for the kind invitation and the invitation to speak. I am, like you, sorry to not be able to be there in person. Um, so I speak to you from Norway, where this is day 48 in lockdown. But we are doing well, uh, as I hope you are. I want to emphasize from the start that this presentation is not a one-man job. Um, I, I've added Ben Clarsen on the title slide. He has been instrumental in setting up the program I will discuss. And as you will see, our entire team is involved in the project. So if I accidentally say I during this presentation, it should be we. And in truth, most of the times it should be they. But let me begin by describing who we are. So the Norwegian sports model is unique in that all of Norwegian sports, amateur, able-bodied, disabled, professional is united in one governing body. And as you can say, see, the name it gets quite long. But Olympia Toppen is like the Olympic Committee, except it's the operative department for elite sports development in our elite sports model. So Olympia Toppen, we are responsible for challenging as well as supporting our best athletes. Yet the responsibility for results in each of the sports rests with the national federations. Ours is one of supporters and challengers. Let me spend a minute on the values underpinning Norwegian sports. And as you can see on this slide, these are honesty, joy of sport, health and community. And if we ask ourselves how this translates to elite sports, and particularly focus on the health aspect, we have said health is a prerequisite for quality of life and for performance. But if you spend a minute thinking about this value set, uh, I think most people see health and sports as overlapping entities. Think of the extremely fit athlete. But the question is, how much do the value sets underpinning these two entities overlap, really? If we first take medicine or health, it is about wellness, it's about functionality, it is about disease prevention. Whereas if we look at sport, especially elite sports, it's about winning, it's about competitiveness, it's about performance, it's about entertainment. And it may be argued that there's actually no overlap between the two. So for the medical department or the department of sports medicine at Olympia Toppen, what we have uh, communicated very clearly is that the first and foremost responsibility of our department is the long-term health of the athlete. This should weigh more than winning medals in the short term. And that our primary motivation should be the health of the athlete, not performance. In other words, we cannot be the athlete's fan. There are enough people focusing on the performance aspect of science. Our main role, or one of our main roles, 
is to balance this out by arguing uh, the health uh, aspect when difficult decisions need to be made. The expectations are clear. We are to deliver top quality services, diagnosis and treatment. We need to be accessible, easily available for the elite athletes. We need to be able to work in teams, cross-disciplinary, and we need to have uh, good access to an international network uh, that we can consult with when needed. The main goal of the department as such is to provide optimal medical treatment for today's and tomorrow's elite athletes, as well as focus on working interdisciplinary to prevent injury and illness. This is the staff. Um, it looks like a lot of people, but when you do the math, this uh, equates to five full-time physicians uh, working in our team. Uh, these are the physical therapists. And again, it's about five uh, full-time physicians, um, which means that we do have enough to do. I'd like to especially highlight two of the members of this team. One is Ben Clarsen, as mentioned before, and the other is Lars Haugbott, who is currently the project manager for the screening and monitoring project in our department. And it's important again to reiterate, everyone in the department is involved in this program, as you will see. The medical department's scope is Olympia top athletes. These are uh, people, uh, athletes who already have shown um, medal potential in Olympic Games and such. But we're also open to all other national team athletes, senior and junior, as well as athlete students at Elite Sports High School. So we are operating as a normal medical clinic, if you like, for these athletes groups. But we also have the specific tasks of following up our scholarship athletes. Uh, these are the Olympic top and athletes and especially Olympic Paralympic candidates, as well as lead the medical team for Olympics, Paralympics and other uh, of the many multi sports events that are being organized these days. So what are the challenges in providing medical support to an Olympic uh, and Paralympic team? Well, First of all, we have lots of small teams. We're not a big country, so we might sometimes have a team of one athlete in one sport who, is, who, who can compete at the elite level. Our athletes live all over the world and they travel constantly. Uh, there are few sports that have year-round medical coverage. The Federation simply cannot afford to have a medical team uh, uh, in place. And many of our best athletes relate to multiple medical providers. Imagine someone who is a professional cyclist living in France, but also with a home in Norway. Uh, he relates maybe to us, to the national team, uh, doctor and physio, to his professional club team, uh, and may also have a, a, a local family physician in uh, Monaco or wherever he lives. This is a challenge for communication between medical providers. And we have learned that athletes can be slow in reporting new health problems. This sometimes results in problems being under the radar uh, and without a clear management plan. This slide illustrates uh, the challenge uh, with organization and with providing medical care. So, this actually depicts uh, the candidate teams for the Pyeongchang Winter Games and Paralympic Games. And as you can see from the symbols here, these are the teams that actually do have a team physio or a team doctor hired by the Federation or organized by their own Federation. So what we need to do to provide care for all of these athletes is go in with resources from our medical department and assign the responsibility for each of these teams who do not have their own medical support. We typically begin this program um, about two years before um, every um, Olympic and Paralympic Games. And this starts uh, with medical screening, which is intended to result in an action plan, targeted action plan, and then an injury and illness monitoring program, which I will describe shortly. 
So in many ways you could say this is the main tool. This is how we from Olympia Top Insight try to support the athletes and the federations uh, during each Olympic cycle uh, preparing the athletes for the Games. This program has been running now uh, since London 2012 and expanded and, uh, and revised along the way. And I will describe our current program uh, in the following slides. What I would like to emphasize first though, before I go into details, is that this primarily is a clinical program to optimize athlete health. Keep them healthy and hopefully in that way win more medals. Uh, under the surface, we also collect data that we use for epidemiological research, but philosophy, the guiding philosophy of the program is that it is not a research project uh, that may or may benefit athletes sometime in the future. Our screening and monitoring program should have direct and immediate benefits for all the stakeholders, athletes, medical staff and coaches. So. Let's have a look at the program, the way we run it with our Norwegian athletes. First, there's the screening component. And if we go back a little over 10 years, uh, this group of experts uh, met in Lausanne uh, to write an IOC consensus statement on the periodic health evaluation of elite athletes or pre-participation examination, if you like. And in this several reasons outlined for why you may want to perform uh, an examination like this. First, it could be about identifying the high-risk athlete. So the question of looking into the future, who is going to be, who is at risk for injury. The second could be identify existing problems. So who is injured and ill? What are their problems uh, currently? Third, baseline testing. testing could be valuable to have something to compare to if the athlete is later injured or ill. Fourth, importantly, to review medications and supplements that athletes uh, may be taking and make sure that they're not in conflict with the World Anti-Doping Code. Fifth, to establish the relationship with the athlete, not just the athlete meeting you or you meeting the athlete, but also the athlete getting to know you as a medical provider. And then finally, in some international federations and national organizations, there are legal requirements that athletes pass a medical, uh, so to speak, before they're allowed to perform. So let me first just quickly address the top issue. Is it possible to identify who the high risk athlete so that would be looking into the future using some kind of a test to say, well, your test score uh, puts you at, at a very high risk of uh, getting an injury. And the question is, can we do that better than just flipping a coin? I will not uh, go more into detail on this, but I direct those of you who are interested in that topic uh, to this paper published about four years ago, uh, where I argue why screening tests to predict injury do not work and with a sad uh, addition here, and probably never will. So in the Norwegian Olympic Committee, we do not use tests to identify who the high risk athletes are or try to look into the future. But we do the examination to try and identify existing problems among athletes. And of course, health problems do exist. Um, this slide shows uh, non-injury health problems at the time of screening of the Tokyo Olympic team. Um, and as you can see here, uh, nearly half of uh, athletes uh, suffer from some sort of uh, allergy. Uh, the Paralympic athletes to the, to the diagram, you can see that in this group, you also have the added burden of chronic disease. Uh, musculoskeletal problems at the time of screening. Basically half of the athletes present uh, at screening with some problem and the same apply or injury problem and the same applies to the Paralympic uh, athlete population. So screening does detect multiple health problems. Uh, the idea is then to use screening and make sure that they're optimally managed. What about the next issue then, uh, baseline testing? 
This is an example of an athlete suffering an ACL injury after being screened. Um, and here you see the results from isokinetic knee extension testing and vertical jumps. The intention then is, uh, of course, that the screening examination is followed up with an action plan. Um, targeting specific areas that uh, needs to be worked on by the athletes, by the medical team, by the coaching team. Um, this clearly is a challenging uh, task uh, because it does uh, require the engagement of so uh, many people, essentially all those working with uh, each athlete. This then brings me to uh, the second part and that is the monitoring program. So, when we've completed the screening, uh, athletes are entered into an injury and illness monitoring program. Um, this is based on the Oslo Sports Trauma Research Center questionnaire and health problem, which we designed uh, a few years ago in order to capture, uh, to be able to capture all types of injury uh, and illness problems uh, in athletes, not just the major ones, those uh, causing time loss from sport and from training. So before I, I describe how, it is important to point out that the program has, has is meant to serve two purposes, one on the individual level and one um, on the big picture. So let's call it the team, the team level. On the individual level, the surveillance and monitoring program helps with communication between athletes and their medical staff. It helps identify new problems early and it allows us to monitor known problems, chronic problems that athletes have on how they fluctuate over time. At the big picture level, so that would be the Olympia Open level or the team level, we can identify patterns of injuries and illnesses, uh, what, who, when. We can identify areas uh, where we might uh, decide to focus uh, prevention uh, efforts. Um, and we can assess the effect of anything that we do to try and prevent injury and illness in the team. So then let me explain how this is done. Uh, the normal injury and injury, illness surveillance uh, program uh, is typically done by the athlete reporting to the medical team and then the medical team uh, reporting to the manager or the database uh, collecting uh, overall data for the entire team or a group of teams. Now the difference to this uh, program is that reports weekly their health status to a database. Uh, the medical team is alerted through an online health dashboard um, and are then expected to provide individual follow-up uh, on each problem and at the same time record diagnosis information in the database. So let's have a look at how this looks for the athlete. So every week athletes uh, get an alert on their cell phone to respond to four key questions on the consequences of any health problems they may have. These uh, questions focus on sports participation, on training modification, have they had to ch and change their training because of a health problem at any time? Uh, has performance been, ex uh, been um, uh, affected uh, because of a health problem? And do they have any symptoms, typically pain, if it's uh, a question of, uh, of injuries? If they have reported a health problem, they will be asked, well, is it an injury or an illness? Um, which region uh, does it affect? What were your symptoms in terms of uh, if, if it's an illness? Uh, is it a new problem? Uh, did you lose any uh, time from uh, training or competition? And who knows about it and any comments? Once the answer has completed the questionnaire, which goes into there is an alert sent when a new health problem is, uh, is reported via email or uh, SMS or both uh, to the medical team. Uh, 
and expected to follow up individually and record the diagnosis in the database. So in Olympiatopen, um, we have an overview, we have access to an overview of the health of all um, the athletes uh, on our teams. And then each health provider has his or her own team. Um, and you see here the example of five athletes. Uh, the colors uh, represent, each box represents one week. The colors represents whether the athlete is healthy, shown as green or injured, uh, shown as yellow, orange, red, or, uh, which indicates the severity uh, of the health problems uh, reported. Um, and if you then click in on uh, any of these athletes, you will get uh, a view like this. So this is an example of an athlete uh, with an overuse injury uh, of the knee. Um, and where the severity of the injury each of the weeks going back one year is indicated by uh, the height of the, uh, of the green area um, in this diagram. Um, it can be seen here with multiple health problems uh, suffered uh, by an athlete over the same time period. Um, and you can see a list of all the problems uh, down here. Again, um, giving a detailed overview um, of the status of each athlete on the team. So um, let's have a look at some example data, big picture data on our Olympic and Paris. And the data I'm about to show, to share with you, is on our uh, candidates for the Tokyo Games, Olympic and Paralympic uh, Games, so covering a 16 month period um, until uh, the end of, of last year. And this is obviously an ongoing monitoring uh, as the games have now been postponed until uh, 2021. The questions we can ask, the big piece of picture questions that we can ask and answer are questions like how often do our athletes get injured or ill? How much training in, uh, is missed uh, because of injury and illness? How many of our athletes are sick or injured at any given time? And identify the biggest health problems uh, affecting our team or our teams. So first, how often do our athletes get sick or injured? Our data show that on average, each of our athletes report five health problems each year, three injuries, and two illnesses. And we obviously also have the ability to look at these data on uh, a team basis. Um, this is one example only. Um, because time is limited, um, I will have to limit myself to overall data uh, for the end of the period. So the next question is then how much training is missed due to injury and illness? And it turns out that on average, our Olympians and Paralympians lost 34 days last year because of health problems. 34 days of training lost, 26 days on average due to injury, and eight days due to illness. So clearly injuries and illnesses represent a key factor in uh, being able to train and then subsequently being able to perform. The next question is uh, how many of our athletes are sick or injured at uh, any given time? Uh, and I uh, underline that this is any uh, health problem, even very minor problems. Uh, so one in three of our athletes have a health problem at uh, any time. Mainly, this is about physical complaints and to a lesser degree, uh, illness problems. Of course, varies from sport to sport. And the final question here is, what are the biggest health problems affecting our team? So um, a risk matrix, as shown in this slide, is a good way to um, illustrate which problems are, uh, should be the key priorities. This then shows the same data for the uh, entire Olympic and Paralympic team. Um, and for those of you who are not familiar with these uh, matrices, um, on the vertical axis is a measure of severity. In this case, the average number of time lost days for each of the, uh, of the health problems uh, depicted in the, in the, in the figure. 
and on the horizontal axis is the incidence. So how often do these injuries happen? Obviously, the product of severity and incidence is a measure of how important uh, or what the burden of this health problem uh, would be. And that also means that the darker the orange color, the more uh, important uh, is the problem. And overall, you will see that there is one type of injury that, uh, that um, uh, differs from the rest, and that's knee injuries. And the circle shows that this is acute knee injuries. So the by far biggest burden in our Olympic and Paralympic team uh, is of knee injuries. Is from knee injuries. So risk matrices like this can be then be created for each team, uh, each subgroup of athletes, uh, whatever you like, to identify prevention uh, focus areas for prevention. So the question then becomes. What are the critical factors for a program like this uh, to work? The key, one key issue is, of course, response rates. Athletes need to uh, respond. And as you can see, over the period uh, we've just been discussing, the average response rate has been 83%, and currently uh, it sits at 85%, I think, last week. And we're very happy with that. And we have learned by trial and error, I must admit, that technology is critical. It's very simple, really. Everything needs to work every time. And the users, the athletes and the practitioners have to like the system. And in, in choosing between the carrot and the stick, um, another thing that we've learned is that in order for a system like this to work, it's only a carrot approach that is going to uh, help you. So it's important that rather than being a research project that Olympia Toppen does that may or may not benefit athletes in the future, our monitoring program should have direct and immediate benefits for all stakeholders, athletes, medical staff and coaches. This cannot be said often enough, also within our team. So the question of the athlete is, what's in it for me? The question of the medical team is the same, what's in it for me? The question the coach asks is, what's in it for me? How is this program going to help us keep our athletes healthy? And the way we try to address those questions is, well, for the athlete, it's better, more timely medical care, perhaps. For the medical team, it helps them do a better job, knowing what the athletes are doing at any time in terms of health problems. Um, and for the coach, it's all about getting more training days, keeping the athletes healthy. Um, and then the final question, which I threw in for fun, I guess, is does it help uh, Norway win medals? So if we go to Create a Sporting Nation, the website that uh, uh, pulls statistics from all sports, Olympic and uh, non-Olympic sports, it clearly shows that the by far best sporting nation in the world is the United States. So congratulations on that. And Norway is all the way down in 11th place. But if you take the population size into account, we're doing okay, perhaps batting above our weight class. But you might say, well, that's because you do so well in the winter sports. And yes, that is. But if you take a historical perspective on this, this is not necessarily, uh, has not necessarily always been the case. Going back to Torino 2006 and looking at the medal table there, you will see that Norway is all the way down in 13th place with only two gold medals. And as the media like to depict it, illness within the team, perhaps a norovirus um, epidemic, uh, may have been a major contributing uh, factor to Norway not uh, performing as expected during those games. 
Um, and in fact, 17% uh, of the athletes on the team were ill or injured uh, during games time. If we go to Vancouver 2010, when Ola Rensen was the CMO of the, of the team, we will see that uh, only 5% were ill and Norway climbed on the medal table until fourth place. And then Sochi uh, 2014, second place with a similar uh, number of ill and injured athletes. And finally, now in Pyeongchang, uh, keeping that number low and stable, Norway was able to climb into first place. And of course, we were very happy as were the athletes. And now you ask yourself, well, did we, uh, did we prepare perfectly for those games? Um, and I'll end by showing this video, uh, which was taken during, uh, halfway through the Olympic Games from the cafeteria at the Norwegian Olympic uh, Training Center, where you can clearly see that the administration had not prepared uh, for any event uh, during the games. I thank you very much for your uh, attention, but I would also like to take this opportunity to invite you, to re-invite you, I should say, to Monaco for the IOC World Conference on Prevention of Injury and Illness in Sport. And of course, as many of you know, we were forced to postpone this until 2021, but here are the dates, 4th through 6th of March 2021. I wish all of you welcome to Monaco, where we will run uh, basically the same program as you were invited to this year, however with adjustments uh, uh, as needed for new evidence and uh, new knowledge that has come about during this year. And yes, I do expect the COVID pandemic to be uh, an issue that we will cover in detail during the conference. So welcome to Monaco. Uh, nearly a year, 11 months from now. Thank you very much.